Welcome, everybody, to this Digital Conversation. I'm Dia Davidson. You know, the Census Bureau and the National Fatherhood Initiative estimate that one-third of children are growing up in a home with an absentee father. But a Lexington man has been getting national attention as he helps men become responsible men. We want to welcome now David Cozart. He's the director of the Fayette County Fatherhood Initiative. David, it's good to see you. Good to be here. Let me tell you, when I looked up on the screen from my desk and I saw your face there on the Today Show, albeit by Skype, <laughs> I was so very proud, not just to see you there, but to hear what you're trying to do to help these young men in our community. Let's talk a little bit about what you're doing and how the community can help. Yeah, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. appreciate those, uh, those high compliments coming from you, one that's on the screen very frequently. Oh, thank you. I was a bit odd on there, <laughs> even though it was by Skype, but I was uh, honored yes. uh, to be uh, in that space for that reason. So the work uh, that I'm called to do, I believe, and been doing for several years, and the work that really a network of people that we developed are doing, uh, is uh, the Fayette County Fatherhood Initiative, uh, who adopts as its mission to restore, equip, and deploy fathers and men back into the family and the faith community and the community at large. Um, we seek to help educate men on uh, believe it or not, what it, what it is and what it means to be a man and go on to uh, teach them and help them learn more about what it means to be a positive father in the lives of their children, uh, positive partners and husbands and wives with their significant others, um, try to hit it comprehensively. Well, this is a process. It's not something that just happens overnight. So let's talk a little bit about, um, and we're seeing footage, of course, from the Today Show interview, of how these individuals are identified and sort of um, how you get others to help you to bring them over to, to manhood. Yeah. So they're identified uh, in a way that... Uh, is the, the, the principle of all of our programming at the Lexington Leadership Foundation. Uh, we adopt as a mantra around there, if you're doing it alone, you're doing it wrong. And so we're a partner-centric, uh, collaboration-heavy program. And so our referrals come through our partners, strong partners of uh, Administrative Office of the Courts, what many of us know as drug courts, right. uh, DCBS, the Department for Community-Based Services, what many people know as the Social Services Office, uh, family court uh, and other partners refer the men to us. So that's how we meet most of our men. Uh, we also some schools will refer from time to time. But uh, the, the way we do it uh, is we uh, engage them in cohorts of 10 to 15 men and educational cohorts that again talk about what it means to be a man and what it means to be a father, but also uh, builds a peer support group expands the network uh, of these men. And that's critical, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. You, uh, like I know, that much of what we do and much of our success is predicated on the relationships and the network we have. Uh, we, our networks help us excel and our networks help motivate us when we're not excelling. Sure. Some of our networks, our primary network are our families, maybe our faith community. Uh, and then networks in the business community and the community at large, where there are, there are, are populations of men of all races and ages and ethnicities that just don't have those fundamental networks, uh, positive networks. Right. And so then we, we see individuals fabricating or, or, or uh, becoming parts of networks that aren't so positive right. because of our natural human inclination to be part of a network, right? right. Uh, and the benefits that come with it. And so. the wanting to be accepted. Absolutely. But now you're saying that it's more than just these traditional labels or the familiar labels. We're trying to break a cycle and build these individuals up and really be able to show them, shine the light on the positives within, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Uh, I, I say uh, it, it's some of these Oh, burly, ugly men that we work with are a tough sell sometimes, right? Like myself. That's a tough sell to say we want to empower and, and, and help this individual. 
but I'm heard saying that this is really a children's program uh, via the father. It's really a family program via the father. It's really a neighborhood revitalization program through these men. Uh, and so it is really about uh, breaking cycles. Uh, it's not uncommon to hear uh, a father say, my father's father was absent. Uh, and we've had several generations where there were, spot, there were father absences in those families. And so they never really saw, truly modeled for them, uh, a, a prototype or a, a healthy father and healthy family atmosphere. So to teach them those principles at times is, is critical. Well, now you're joining forces with other agencies and the city of Lexington is joining Louisville with a very exciting initiative. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. So a couple of years ago, Lexington in this region was fortunate to, uh, to really be called out and recognized by uh, what have come to be great uh, partners for this city and region, the Keenan Foundation. That they're out of North Carolina, but they do work in grants in North Carolina, New York, Florida, and Kentucky. It's the home places of their principals. And so there were some funds that were distributed to Fayette County Public Schools, Kentucky State, some in Louisville, United Way here, the Lexington Leadership Foundation received some funds to work primarily with African American males right. um, to increase and enhance their life outcomes and educationally and socially and familially. And uh, we were a beneficiary of that. Uh, because a lot of these issues are more pervasive in the African-American community. They're not exclusive no. to the African-American community, but we know they're more pervasive mm -hmm. from a percentage standpoint. And so growing and la layering up on that, uh, we are building partnerships now to work with Lexington and Louisville uh, to work with young men uh, ages 16 to 25 that are on the, what, what, what one might say on the margins uh, as it relates to that pipeline to success, maybe known to the justice system. So we want to uh, create a network of resources, a continuum of care that will increase their chances of that pipeline leading to success vocationally or educationally or as an entrepreneur or uh, in, in higher education. Uh, employment with a municipality perhaps. We want to increase those chances and and again uh, really just building a network of supports and relationships that enhance the, the, the probability of them being successful. Do you need volunteers, male volunteers, to help you on this journey? Yeah, so um, we will, mm -hmm. you know, we always, it, it, the, the village sure. concept, sure. a component of this will be uh, mentoring and, and positive peer relationships. So individuals that have an inclination to share their experiences right. because there are many of us that have had experiences that were less than desirable and may have even had some peppered past and been delivered and succeeded sure, out of that. Sure. Who better to help someone uh, than someone that has been in that situation mm -hmm. themselves. And so there are volunteer opportunities there. Uh, there will be many more, we believe, for our businesses and other folks to come on board and say, hey, I want to help change these trajectories as well. Uh, but the wise thing that we know we need to do is plan. And so for nine months, really it will be March 2018 before we launch that proper and we have our what we call our fellows because these are fellowships. Right. Um, It'll be about nine months before we launch that. So in that planning, we'll be developing those supports and volunteers and, and networks. Well, hopefully then we'll be able to sit down again for another conversation and you can tell us a little bit more about what's going on and, and really how people can really continue to help yeah. push this forward. I, I, I am believing that we will be able to do that. Oh, I know it. David, mm -hmm. it's good to see you. And it's always good to have you. And we thank you so much for watching this LEX18 Digital Conversation. Be sure to follow us on LEX18.com for more digital conversations. I'm Dia Davidson.